Alright shove it squad, today's a video I've held off on making for a couple of years. The main reason being is that Brian Zane already briefly covered this topic. And you know me, I like to keep my content as original as I can. Brian is one of the few wrestling YouTubers I actually respect, because I wouldn't be here doing my thing if it wasn't for him entertaining me in the first place. So shout out to him, probably the most praise I've ever given anyone on wrestling YouTube. His hair still looks like a cow pat though. Anyway, enough time has passed and I thought I could do an in-depth review of this pay-per-view, because Brian's was very brief. I also felt like they deserved a bit of attention because since Brian made that video, WoW did start making TV episodes as of 2019, and they're on their 8th season now. Today's video was also a Patreon request by Brian Hanigar. If you want to make the Hawk talk, sign up today. And speaking of today, today I'll be reviewing WoW Unleashed 2001. This was an all-female pay-per-view from WoW Wrestling Federation. They had a little TV show going at the time, so decided to make a pay-per-view. This is coming from the same guy who made Glow in the early 90s. This one is coming at you from Inglewood, California, with an actually impressive crowd of just shy of 10,000. Not bad for a show without a single major wrestler on it. Anyway, enough talking, let's do it. Well, the next three hours of my life is probably going to suck. The ring announcer is running down the card and makes a mistake straight away, getting confused over who the champion is. The production value is so bad already. There's loud replay clips playing whilst the announcer is trying to describe the matches we'll be seeing tonight, it just sounds terrible. It seems like they want to be a legit wrestling show, but then they spend ages talking about a bikini match. He tells us to log on to WWE.com to cast our votes. Someone smacked this guy one. We meet our commentary team now which is Lee Marshall and somehow they also got Bobby the Brain Heenan. So it's a WCW gimmick. No I'm joking, at least the commentary team won't suck on this show with two WCW guys. Heenan is also interviewed because nobody cares about Lee Marshall. Bobby Heenan reveals that he's here because he's seen all wrestling in the world apart from WoW and he needs to see what's happening here I guess. The interview is interrupted by Harley's Angels who are doing an Aces and Eights gimmick. One of them does a Hogan impression saying what are you going to do when Harley's Angels make roadkill out of you? Another jarring cut later and a girl is crying in a hospital bed saying please help me. But it's apparently a psychiatric room and she escapes. She is Jacqueline Hyde and has her own nurses, lucky girl. She takes on the one-eyed wonder Randy Ra Ra. She has a cheerleader gimmick and one eye. Randy puts her in a headlock and keeps smiling. She does some acrobatics into a diving splash. Nice arm drag from Ra Ra now and she's actually working the arm with leg drops. Jacqueline throws her off with a snap mirror. She also does a throwback which looks bad. Jeff Hardy starts dumping his nappy now because Jacqueline is stealing his move. It's not his finishing manoeuvre though. Jacqueline is stopped from diving and is drop kicked in the tree of woe. Randy Ra stops leapfrogging her before hitting a middle rope crossbody for the free. Pretty short and basic match but Randy showed some good athleticism. Not sure what the point was in all that hospital bed stuff earlier because Jacqueline turned out to be fairly normal. He then tries to interview Randy Ra Ra but the microphone doesn't work and he looks annoyed. It does come on eventually and she threatens some other girl by saying I've got my eye on you. Get it? Hilarious stuff. The show goes dark for about 60 seconds now. They probably spent the budget on swimsuit models. Now we get a tag match. It's the Persian Parasite Farah teaming with Paradise. This is one island the hawk wouldn't mind being on. They face Summer and Sandy, the beach patrol. I have zero hopes or expectations for this match. I'm just going to watch and enjoy. Paradise botches a leapfrog almost straight away and gets a crossbody. A bad looking short arm clothesline now. A tag is made and Sandy hits a double crossbody. Seconds later her blonde head is smashed off with a double clothesline. They continue working her over with a double suplex. Summer tries to come back for go behind and a really bad roll up on the ropes. Tag is made now and the other blonde does a crossbody for a two. I think that's the only move they know in WoW Women of Wrestling. The Persian Parasite puts on a torturous submission, but she can't get the tap out win as the other blonde drop kicks her in the back of the head. Wasn't expecting a ref bump in this match, but there is one, and that will be a trend going forward. The blonde tries a victory roll, but only one manages it and it's a double pin. The idiot referees argue with the commentators about it for some reason. The match is ruled as a draw as Heenan points out how stupid it all was. It goes black again with the crowd chanting bullshit in the background. It's a random character shot of some blonde signing autographs. I don't know who they are and I don't think the commentary team do either. Somewhere else a man is stealing flowers and smiling at them. The audio all sucks. Another match now, it's Blonde, Jane Blonde. She doesn't even look that blonde, it's more sandy. Although that doesn't sound as good for her gimmick. I love these video packages before their entrance. She's here using secret special agent weapons. She faces... Xena Warrior Princess I guess. Jane Blonde is shoved down straight away. Yay another leapfrog botch. Jane takes her down by the arm and keeps an armbar on. She celebrates too soon and gets a weak kick to the gut followed by an integuri. Her next integuri is missed. Nice single leg drop kick from Jane Blonde now. They trade pinfalls now, at least it's better than the last match. 
Jane Blonde connects with the scoop slam and climbs to the top. She spends too long and misses our missile dropkick. The warrior princess gives her a big swing, and when she gets up, a spinning heel kick, and that's somehow the end of the match. So far, none of these matches have gotten out of first gears, nowhere near pay-per-view quality. It's fine, but I can't imagine paying to watch this. For ages, I sit through a really dated looking pre-recorded slow motion bikini video. I just hoped no one would walk in. This is like adult entertainment for grandads. I get to learn that Paradise, the girl from earlier, is actually from Tonga. Bobby the Brain says she's better looking than the Tongans that he knows. Another match now is a girl called Hammering Heather Steel. This gimmick is no buys. She takes on a woman with a big boss man gimmick called Nikki Law. Surprisingly, she does a gut wrench suplex, which is probably the biggest move we've seen so far. She hits a punch to the gut, not once, not twice, but thrice, and it sure wasn't nice. Another big slam for the big boss woman. Heather still takes down for drop kick, but then it's turned around with a drop toe hold. A neck breaker ends the match, a complete squash match. The police officer women have handcuffs, and they smash the poor girl with the nightstick. In the back, Terry Gold is curling more weight than most people could probably manage nowadays. Another girl with a Mickey James gimmick is whispering on the phone. The audio was already bad, whispering isn't going to help me. It's now a tag match. That's a bad gimmick right there. Her name is simply Boom Boom. Her partner is a belly dancer called Caliente, which means hot in Spanish. Now I understand why Taz kept calling Sarita that in TNA. They face a girl who's called Jade. She is Asian, so of course she has a kung fu gimmick. Her partner is the exotic flower Lotus. They are the Asian invasion. One of their grandmothers is here. Lee Marshall asks if it's Tokyo Rose. Wow, World War II references on women of wrestling. The Asian Invasion don't have a very good time for a while because Boom Boom is banging into them. Jade eventually hits head scissors. The other girls are in now. Lotus with a really bad handspring back elbow. She tries another slow motion one which is blocked with a kick. Bam Bam almost wins it with a big splash. Heenan is enjoying being a creepy pervert in this match. Jade stands on the top rope for ages. They could have discovered a cure for the wrestling fix in the time it took for her to hit this diving harakarana. She also does a monkey flip to the other girl. Boom Boom does two splashes in the corner followed by a bonsai drop and Jade has to break up the pin. Jade is by far the best girl we've seen so far. The wheelbarrow into the pin gets a two. She tries another but she's dropped on her face. It ends seconds later to a fireman's carry slam. Jade was Gail Kim before Gail Kim existed. She literally wrestled the exact same way but it's 2001. Whatever happened to this Jade girl I liked her. Bunch of random video packages play all at once, and we're into our next match. A dominatrix teacher is here called the Disciplinarian, which I can barely say. She will face the girl with the Mickey James gimmick, she is Bronco Billy. It's really hard to care about this match, I'm just not invested in these characters. I'm not sure why any of these people are fighting. This match does feature the worst botch of all time. It's a bulldog and it's the worst bulldog of all time. You can tell the commentators are bored at this point and they're just trying to entertain themselves. They do another bulldog which still doesn't look great. The disciplinarian does a pedigree which isn't a free as the bucking bronco gets her leg on the rope. She immediately rolls her opponent up. The ring announcers announce the wrong person is the winner. What a mess. The disciplinarian on the mic says she isn't done with her and she tells her that she's purchased her ranch. Ha ha ha. So be on your best behaviour or you and your family will be sleeping with the pigs tonight. The ring announcer takes time to correct himself. This sounds so carny. The champion is here, I guess, but due to sound issues, I can barely hear what she says. I think her name's Danger. She sounds like a hillbilly. More swimsuit stuff. Jade from earlier does it. She covers her eyes up with a rag. I wonder what her gran was thinking watching this. I'd never have a problem watching girls on a beach, but the music is giving me a headache and all the fast cuts and filters are hurting my hawk eyes. The next match is a woman called Slam Dunk who is apparently six foot three. She cuts a promo about what a great athlete she is, and she's undefeated. This promo sucks, nobody reacts. She takes on Roxy Powers. This is two big ladies right here. Slam Dunk has her leg kicked out and she looks annoyed by it. At least Slam Dunk manages to do her leapfrog. Be a bit worrying if she couldn't do it with a name like that. The Hulk Hogan leg drop gets her a two. The match is very slow. Slam Dunk misses a top rope leg drop. I'd like to see Hogan do that one. Then there's a ref bump. Slam Dunk grabs her opponent around the throat while she frantically shakes her head no. Sometimes seems to pass before a choke slam. It's not the free, and for some reason she now choke slams the referee. Roxy Power super kicks her and another ref counts a two before he's dragged from the ring. The referees are arguing at the commentary desk again. And yet again nobody wins because it's declared a double DQ. I'm not even sure what the other girl did wrong. 
Slam dunk, choke slams the referee and it ends. A terrible, confusing match. The man with the flowers is back. Why is the audio so bad when it was pre-recorded? I'm sure it wouldn't be live. I literally can't hear a single word being said. The three minute segment ends, I'm none the wiser. Great storyline development here, you can't even hear it. A hardcore match now, it's Riot. I'm pretty sure Brian Zane described her as looking derpy, and I would agree with him. She asks the crowd if there's any rioters in the house. To be fair, the crowd do react to her promo. As she cuts her promo, you can see men around ringside laughing at her. Her opponent is Wendy Wheels, who I guess has a mechanic gimmick. Heenan asks if she's a janitor. Riot is immediately dumped into a trolley and it's smashed into the ring pole. She responds with a cooking tray to the head. Riot tries a power bomb on the outside, but she's thrown overhead. Wendy dives off the apron at her with a clothesline. She gets Riot in the ring with a sunset flip and a two count. To be fair, Riot is one of the only girls so far who seems to be heavily invested in their gimmick. Later on, Riot... <laughs> Whoa, a corkscrew elbow from the top. She looks like she was stuck in a tornado. That's somehow just a two. It looked like a finisher. She tries to dive off the apron, but Wendy hits her in the gut with something. Beer starts flying around the arena. Now Riot uses a stop sign to the head. She has a bottle and she's spraying the fans who look a mixture of annoyed and happy. That distracts her and Wendy's able to smack her with another weapon. Another wacky move now from Riot. It's like an armbar takedown, but she's using her legs instead of her arms. Riot puts her straight into a cross face. The mechanic smacks her off with a weapon. Wendy deposits Riot on the top rope, but she takes too long and she's kicked down. Nothing happens. Now Riot puts Wendy on the top rope. It's a waste of time because all she does is a scoop slam on a metal plate. The match is starting to drag as Riot keeps using a trash can. After a very long time, she drop kicks it on Wendy's head. This is by far the longest match so far. Riot tries to power bomb her on the metal plate but completely misses it, but it does end the match. I'll give her this much, she's too good to be on this show. Just like Jade, I'm wondering what went wrong after this for these girls. If there's anyone in the comments who can give me a backstory on these women, I'd actually be interested to know, and I'm sure the rest of the squad would be too. Anyway, next we've got what the ring announcer calls a famous splash match. Jungle Girl looks a bit like Claire Lynch from TNA, and she faces Becky, the farmer's daughter. Strangely, Becky hits the Bubba Bomb ass breaker straight away. She then proceeds to roll her around the ring, but this match can't be won by Pinfall, so what's the point? Jungle Girl picks her straight up and slams her into the mat. Really cool start to this match, I genuinely mean that. Jungle Girl tries a turtle whirl which is countered into a crossbody. Her next crossbody is caught and she's slammed into the mat. Really hard hitting stuff here. Becky manages a leapfrog from the ropes into a couple of arm drags and drop kicks. She's running everywhere and bounces off the ropes with a crossbody. Jungle Girl stops her and hits a sort of pump handle slam. Now it's a sit out slam, I'm actually enjoying this match. Jungle Girl comes off the top with a splash which connects to Becky's face. But... The match isn't over. I thought it was a splash match. Becky is back up again and she slingshots Jungle Girl out of the ring. She also dives off the ring apron with a crossbody that the cameraman mostly misses. That almost gets Becky the counter win. Becky the farmer's daughter is still dominating the ring with a drop kick to the face. She dives with a top rope splash but all she catches is knees. Both girls are looking exhausted now. Absolutely devastating clothesline for Jungle Girl. I can't get over how good this match is. It's a missile drop kick now. Jungle Girl takes too long playing with the crowd which allows Becky to hit her with a corner drop kick while she's on the apron. That doesn't hurt her and Jungle Girl suplexes her back into the ring. For some reason Becky does a sunset flip for a one count. I'm so confused by the rules of this match. Becky tries a splash again but this time she's caught and falls on her nutsack. Jungle Girl smashes her with a middle rope suplex. The girl from the jungle now picks her straight up onto the top rope and hits a belly to belly from the top. Why is nobody trying to put anyone away? Instead of a pin or a splash attempt, Jungle Girl has got a ladder. She sets it up on the outside of the ring and dives into the ring with a diving headbutt to the legs. Damn, the ref counts the three. Wow, this was 2001. The ring psychology sucked, but I can't believe the moves I just witnessed in 2001. If you ignore the fact that the rules were confusing, these two girls did really well. Heenan tells her how impressed he was with her. He tells us that we're going to be seeing a lot more of her and she will be champion soon. So what went wrong? How did none of these girls make anything of themselves? I'm so confused. On the negative side, I've completely given up on trying to follow the backstage segments. The production values are so bad that it's not worth even trying to follow. The next match is to crown the first tag team champions. It's the Aces and Eights girls, the Harley's Angels, Easy Rider and Charlie Davidson. They take on some girls of a prisoner gimmick. They sort of wrap their entrance. Fug is the leader of the bikers and she clotheslines the prisoners down. They take her out quickly with a double face buster. Heenan calls her, um, a large woman. 
The match doesn't start yet because the prisoners cut a promo. It finally starts with Easy Rider coming into the ring the hard way. She also gets a leg drop to the back of the head. Pretty quickly the prisoners mess up a diving axe handle and they take each other out. It's a big side slam now. Some of the actions and taunts in this match are so cringy and embarrassing. One of the prisoners does a snap slam. She climbs to the top rope to attempt to swan on bomb but she misses it. Dude, I was watching the woman of wrestling unleashed pay-per-view the other day, man. And this prisoner, I don't know her name. She stole my swan on bomb finishing maneuver, man. But she missed it. Man, I'm going back to Carolina. And I'm going to tell my stoner friend Shannon all about you, man. Shannon, I've forgiven you. Just don't do it again, man. This match might be the winner for the weakest ref bump. The comrade team make jokes about the agents being on their game tonight. The prisoners do a pretty cool double team move, but no ref. Fug interferes and hits a choke slam. The other prisoner dives off the top rope with a bad looking elbow drop and the ref wakes up to count the three. This match I did not enjoy. So much overbooking and confusing. Another prisoner is here in the ring now and she scoop slams Fug's actually a really big crowd ovation. The prisoners all dive on her and they're crowned the new tag team champions. But they are dicks and kill the referee. Rest in peace that referee. Not a good night for the refs here. They celebrate by doing the worm for some reason. Their win is actually treated like a big deal. So this is something that Woman of Wrestling has done right. I just don't want the I just didn't enjoy this match personally. The production values between the matches are the biggest letdown for this pay-per-view. Because the wrestling side isn't half bad. Now a Dalek voice is playing out for a video package. It'd be nice if I could give you a backstory to why these matches are happening, but nearly all the packages are impossible to understand. This package goes on for 5 minutes. I was relieved they were starting the next match. It's Terry Gold, who I guess is like their Hulk Hogan, because they've constantly talked about how great she is throughout the show, when I can hear what they're saying. And she faces Danger, who is the Woman of Wrestling Champion. This is not the main event though. Danger is another tall woman. She tries a urinagi which is almost reversed into a roll up. Terry Gold has a beat for speed and dives off the rope to a crossbody. Danger comes back with a slingshot slam. It's extremely back and forth, both women keep missing moves. Danger does connect with some moves now. She manages a swinging net breaker and a big side slam. Everyone seems to want to emulate China with the handsprings of this company but none of them look as good. We get yet another ref bump now. Riot is back who admittedly did impress me earlier on. She is attacking Danger. She tries a power bomb through a table, but she botches it. I gave her credit too soon, didn't I? She tries it again, but the table doesn't really break. Still, wasn't expecting to see things like this when I turned this pay-per-view on. Danger is put back in the ring and Terry Gold wins the match with a lion soul. She is the new champion. Just not a good match considering it's for the title, let's be honest. The prison girls cut another promo. They keep finishing each other's sentences. To be fair, one of them is quite a confident performer on the mic. I think she's in charge. The next match is a hair versus hair match. The first lady is a typical Barbie doll and apparently she is the executive producer for Women of Wrestling. So she should be fired. She is Lana Starr. Sounds like someone from OnlyFans. I'm just guessing alright, the hawk ain't no simp. She is on crutches and tries to get out of the head shaving match. The crowd chat bullshit. David McLean makes his way out. He was the creator of Glow and Wow. He takes a shot at the other wrestling companies and says unlike these companies his company will deliver. She starts trying to blackmail him but I guess he won't back down. This will actually be a handicap match though. So the heel Barbie girl wrestler has to wrestle a match on her own. She takes on Poison and Ice Cold who has snow falling from the ceiling as she enters. Ice Cold and Poison knock her down with a double back elbow. Lana Starr reminds me of Tiffany Stratton. It should be over after a weak top rope elbow drop on Lana but the ref is distracted. Ice misses her dive and gets hit with a DDT. Poison rushes the ring and hits an inverted DDT on Lana who manages a kick out. Poison doesn't really have much involvement in this match. A crutch ends up in the ring and they're doing a tug of war and the crutch ends up smacking out Ice Cold. Lana makes the cover whilst the partner just stands there watching like a dumbass, so I'm guessing Poison was secretly aligned with Lana the whole time. Now the short haired Ice Cold will have her head shaved. It was obvious she was the one losing this match because her hair already looks like something from an OAP in a pub in Peterborough. The barber looks like a sex predator. Lana is really enjoying it. They properly restrain Ice Cold though, why did they feel the need to gag her? So yeah, the head shaving happens. Match wasn't great either, moving on to the final match of the show. I'd like to move on, but the head shaving goes on for about 10 minutes. I feel kind of ashamed to even be watching this. Okay, main event time. This one will be a cage match. Fug, who has really unfitting music, is all happy and upbeat for some reason. The ring announcer forgets her name and calls her the wrong name and it sounds stupid. 
She takes on Selena Majors, who doesn't have any music for some reason. She cuts a promo first, telling us that she found some backup to stop any shenanigans, and it will be the champion Terry Gold. The match starts with a drop kick through the ropes from Selena. This really is a hell in a cell match. The match is slow, and they keep cutting to the back to show Ice Cold is still getting her head shaved. How can it possibly take this long? She barely had any hair. Selena Majors is pretty much done for. It's the longest match and also the most boring. There's a ref bump off camera and Ice Cold has now returned. She is screaming on commentary about her head shaving. Nobody cares. Now there's another ref bump as Selena ducks a clothesline. He's straight back up though. And back down he goes again. Why has there been so many ref bumps on this show and none of them meant anything? The ref starts trying to climb the cage to escape the wrestlers but he's thrown to the floor for the third ref bump of the match. Fug smacks him for the fourth ref bump. The ref now does manage to climb out the cage. Well, this is the biggest cage I've ever seen. Selena starts following the ref up the cage, and for some reason she shakes the cage, and he falls off and goes through a table. What? What is going on? Why is the referee taking all of these bumps? It's a Mick Foley gimmick. The match is still going though. Terry Gold is desperately trying to keep the cage door closed because the bikers are trying to break in. Selena Majors does a stone cold stunner for some reason, but there's no ref. She starts arguing with Terry Gold who's just trying to help her out at the end of the day. Fug hits Selena with a steel chair and she deserved that one. I guess because Terry Gold is the enforcer she's allowed to count pins. Oh, and she counts the pin for the three. What a weak ending. Selena is a bad loser and hits Terry Gold with a steel chair. She also smacks another ref out. So many dead referees on this show. This makes TNA look like referees paradise. More refs try to break up the fight. Selena keeps hitting Terry with the belt, but at the same time she's just trying to run away. I guess belts are not very effective in this company. Selena swings the belt at a referee and she falls off the ramp. She deserved that. She's now surrounded by referees. She is Stone Cold Selena Majors. That ends the show. Well, it was better than expected. I think the narrative that this show was bad was unfair. After watching the whole thing, I was definitely entertained in parts, and some of these girls were pretty good and deserve better. Riot, Jade and Jungle Girl all had potential in the ring. The gimmicks were obviously very silly, but if you look past that, a lot of effort went into this pay-per-view. They made an effort to give all the wrestlers personalities and make them stand out as individuals. None of the matches were the same. The crowd was pretty into it and the commentary was very entertaining. If the production hadn't been so bad, this pay-per-view wouldn't have had a bad reputation. By 2001 standards for women, I was very impressed. This was the US, not Japan, and they were doing things I'd never seen the ladies do before. The only negatives I have is way too many ref bumps and some of the girls in the opening matches really weren't ready to be on TV. But it got better as the show went along. Oh and the bikini competition was cringe, I don't think they ever even announced the winner after having to sit for all of that too. Unfortunately Women of Wrestling ended at this point as they ran out of investment and ideas. But Women of Wrestling has made its return to TV since 2019. It's a hard show to grade but the main thing is I wasn't bored which is the biggest sin of the Shove It show. So I'd give this show a D. There were moments that I was genuinely impressed, and if you don't agree with that, take a punch to the gut, be my guest. 